for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. How about a roll call, Jared? Tammy Blank? Here. Cinder Bird? Here. Julius Martin Cooper? Present. Mr. Harley? Here. Mr. Kerr? I don't think Terry's online yet. Dr. Ring? Here. Dr. Schaefer? Here. Mr. Schroeder? Here. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for all for attending tonight's special meeting. Uh, we have a rather interesting. Terry says, I'm trying to join, but my internet is terrible. I also tried calling the number and it won't work. Um, we'll get our IT folks working on that. Um, we do have a rather interesting task ahead of us this evening. First of all, I want to thank the community as a whole and express our gratitude for the number of people who, who wish to become a member of this board. I think it's incredible that nine individuals spoke up and said they want to be a part of what we're doing here and have been doing these last last several years. And you have my deepest heartfelt <coughs> thanks for doing that. Uh, it is often difficult to find members to serve, and it's an extremely um, a great list of candidates, and it's it's going to be a, a a challenging decision to come down to the final one that we will we will appoint. Um, so again, my thanks and my gratitude, um, and we'll go ahead and start. We do have some public comment. Um, okay, Bernie Locker, Bernie, you have some. You have three minutes. Three minutes? Okay. Yep, three minutes. Thanks. Um, just, I'm Bernie Walker, uh, uh, lifelong resident of Indiana. Uh, <coughs> here, uh, uh, except for four years of college, I went to Carnegie Mellon University and uh, got degrees in uh, business, economics, and uh, mathematics. Uh, I've owned and operated a business here my entire life. The family business was started by my grandfather in 1930. Uh, I took over the business from my father in 1988. I've operated it ever since. So I'm a lifelong resident of, of, uh, of Indiana here. Um, <clears throat> thanks. Um, it, the, for, the people on the, for, for everybody's benefit, benefit. Oh, we've been on. Sir. You're not going to hear it on the show. <coughs> I'm not, I'm not here. Yeah, it's yeah, the, the benefit of the people who are online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sir. laughs> so we turn this into a comedy routine? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, no, I'm a lifelong resident of Indiana. Uh, I'm married. I have uh, four uh, children that have graduated from Indiana High School. And I have one that's currently, uh, uh, well, I haven't brought the travel report card, but hopefully he's a junior this coming year. So I suspect that he probably is. Uh, and hopefully, uh, one of the principals here know his name. That would probably be a good thing. Uh, but anyhow, I look, I look, look forward to uh, uh, serve on the board if, if selected. Uh, I like, uh, uh, well, I, I, I think you know, health and safety of our kids is uh, most important. Uh, I think that we need to be uh, uh, most care with the uh, uh, recent events at different schools. Uh, the safety of our, of our kids is pretty important to me. Uh, but so is the education and, and a broad balance that uh, mm -hmm. education that, uh, that we think we, uh, uh, our children deserve. And, uh, my four kids have graduated, have all been successful, and all successfully graduated from college. And I contribute that a lot to the, uh, what they learned at Indiana High School in their years here, and I look forward to serving in the future. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, Jim Kinney. Um, hi, my name is uh, Jim Kinnear, and thank you for this opportunity to introduce myself uh, to you. Just to give you a little bit of background of myself, um, I've lived in Indiana since 1989, um, and I have two daughters uh, who attend Indiana Senior High School. And you know what really appealed to me when I saw the, the, this opportunity is that um, education is something that's just at my core and something that I feel very passionate about. Uh, one of my daughters happens to be special needs, so as a parent, I've experienced the educational system both with a typical child and with a special needs child. 
And I think that gives me a unique perspective of you know, some of the things that are important to other parents that might be in that situation. Um, I think in terms of what I can contribute potentially to this board, uh, my current role is working at Indiana Regional Medical Center as Chief Human Resources Officer. In that role, I'm also responsible for several other departments, including imaging, uh, lab, uh, security, and nutrition and food services. So a lot of my work parallels some of the challenges that you may see as a school district uh, in terms of financial budgets, uh, staff personnel issues, and other types of challenges from an operational <coughs> aspect. In community leadership roles, I've uh, served in a number of capacities, including with the Indiana County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, ultimately in 2019, 2020, I was chair of the chamber. And you know, one of the things that I've always been very passionate about is uh, school to work and workforce readiness. And when I started my HR career back in the 90s, I worked very closely with Carol Fry and others with school to work initiatives in the county. And I continued some of that work uh, in my role with the chamber as well. And I can still serve on the workforce development committee. Um, in terms of what I would like to bring as a potential board member, is um, being informed, being a good listener, uh, and someone who takes a great deal of pride in being collaborative and trying to work together. Uh, I'm not offended if someone has an opinion different than myself. I see that as an opportunity for us to learn and grow. So just want to thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Pat Schneider. Thank you. Um, thanks for the time and consideration. Um, I have not lived here my whole life <laughs> um, following these guys here, but I have been living here for the last four years. Uh, I have two kids, one's eight, one's four. Um, one goes to East Pike Elementary here. Um, I did grow up in Catanning, so not too far from here. Um, I know the, the small town, Western Pennsylvania feel. Um, I went to Penn State University, um, got a degree in psychology there. Uh, from there, I went to the University of Denver in Colorado um, and got a degree in sport and performance psychology. Um, and that was a pretty eye-opening experience, as you can imagine, moving from Western Pennsylvania to, to Denver, Colorado, um, really allowed me to, to see the world from a different perspective and appreciate others' um, feedback and opinions and perspectives and things like that. Um, when I'm, I moved back to Pennsylvania after graduating from Colorado, I had a job as a TSS, so working with students with special special needs such as autism, behavioral difficulties, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that really opened my eyes again to the to the world around us and, and the, the the needs that our communities and families do have. Um, from there, I I've worked on as a student assistance program liaison um, for conducting behavioral health screenings. Um, and referring students and families to, to community services that could benefit them, um, which really helped me get an appreciation for, for the challenges and the things that um, students in our communities face. Uh, in that position, I worked at, in near Pittsburgh at uh, Penn Hills, uh, Gateway, River, Riverview, um, and Plum as a few of the districts. Um, I also have experience working as a drug and alcohol counselor, so, um, you know, that again was another eye-opening experience that allowed me to, to kind of see the impact that uh, our community and the members are facing these days. Uh, currently, I work for United Concordia Dental, so um, a bit of a change from my other uh, past experiences, but it has allowed me to kind of see more of the business and financial perspective of things. So, um, you know, working with benefit designs, um, working with companies on their rates and trying to keep costs in check and things like that. So. Um, I feel like that overall that's a pretty well-rounded experience um, and I've always had a passion for helping others in my life. Uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I uh, worked with kids with special needs, uh, worked with school districts. Um, it's been something that I that I always kind of pride myself in is trying to have a positive impact on people that, that I come across. So, um, you know, I would love the opportunity to, to kind of bring some of that experience, um, things that I've, I've gone through and, and seen and uh, you know, provide any kind of support or feedback that I can uh, being on the board. So again, thank you for your consideration and, and time and reviewing things. Your timing is perfect, Pat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe Schwartz. I'm Joe Schwartz. I know many of you. Um, my immediate interest, and thank you for your consideration, by the way, 
my immediate interest in this is uh, over the past five years since retiring from practice, I uh, have been substitute teaching in the school district due to a dire need of substitute teachers. Uh, in that time, I've had the honor of interacting directly with the faculty, the administration, and the students in a very meaningful way, I feel. Um, prior to that, I had uh, 30 years experience caring for students, teachers, administrators, coaches, and others. We worked together on different um, endeavors. And, uh, what I witnessed in 30 years was a, 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 an amazing thing that I never saw in any other state that I've lived in prior to this. I've lived here for 35 years now. And I noticed that the caliber of students graduating from the Indiana School District was outstanding. And many of them return here when they move away, which says something about the area. I think the district itself is a living system. It's a living entity. And that this board, is the central nervous system of it, part of it anyway. And adaptations to changes in the environment, the learning environment and the, the learner environment is drastically different now than it was just three years ago and very drastically different from 30 years ago and even going back further. I've had uh, two children come through the district outstanding results. Um, I, I, I can't say enough about the caliber of the facilities, the teachers, and the effort that goes into this endeavor. Um, my prior experience was dealing with musculoskeletal and ner nervous system disorders. And I got interested in teaching by uh, basically working with people and re-educating them how to function post-injury or post-degenerative disease. And what I saw was um, post-concussion behavioral changes are largely similar to some of the changes in the mentality of students in the district now. And uh, I think there's a thread there. I do. I, I think that there's something that we could approach uh, more synergistically. And after working with the teachers directly, I was so enamored with the process that I actually went back to school and got my bachelor's in education. I graduated last year from IUP, and uh, I just took my praxis test and passed it in biology. Which was, and I turned 65 the next day. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm not sure. I had some people pushing me to do that. And, uh, the uh, your, your time's up, Joe. Okay, that's cool. If you come used to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you again for your consideration. Anybody else? We have one more? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll get oh, 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 there you go. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Dallas Amore, and uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to. Uh, um, apply for the position. Um, uh, by way of background, um, I should report to you that um, I, I, I was born and grew up and started my public education in uh, uh, Ghana in West Africa. So if you're hearing an accent, that's the source of it. Um, I came here to study um, as an undergraduate in the Boston area. And uh, once I finished, I went to Washington University in St. Louis to uh, uh, complete my graduate work. As I was finishing, I, I did some teaching in the St. Louis Community College area before I came to IUP, and much of my career has been built here at IUP. Um, my wife and I have been here for about 38 years. All that time, we've lived in White Township. Um, and I picked up quite a bit of experience at, at um, IUP. First, as an instructor, this is where I got the opportunity to meet many of the uh, um, yeah, area um, high school graduates. And uh, yeah, somebody indicated that they are excellent, they are. And uh, it would be a joy to be able to support that effort and keep it going. Um, um, so apart from direct instruction, I got the opportunity to work in that graduate school uh, as an associate dean, um, helping with graduate enrollment, helping with budgets, uh, collaborating with uh, the graduate programs and supporting them in their curriculum uh, development. From there, I came back to our, our economics department to continue teaching. 
and it didn't take too long before my dean um, um, nominated me to serve as her uh, associate dean uh, in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And there again, supported departments, managed budgets, uh, supported our students in academic trouble to help them recover their academic standing, uh, track students uh, so that they make orderly progress towards graduation. Um, in all this, um, I've had the, the opportunity to, to collaborate with many officers and many officers around campus. Um, and I retired at the, at the end of this month. So uh, my work at IUP has been really fulfilling and I've learned a, a lot, including how to work with other, other groups uh, to solve problems, to ask questions, um, to learn all kinds of things, but to support the institution. Um, I'd like to tell you a bit about my community involvement. Um, uh, my wife and I served as uh, supporters of uh, the uh, Swim Team Parents Organization. I myself have served as a co-chair, um, co-coach <coughs> of uh, um, uh, soccer boosters, youth, uh, soccer youth boosters. I, I served as a, a certified coach for about 10 years. And in between that also, um, I uh, got the opportunity to serve as a, a certified referee, uh, youth soccer uh, uh, referee. Um, that brought me in closer contact with members of the community I've served uh, on the, uh, at the time it was Armstrong, Indiana Drug and Alcohol position. I think now we serve at the second round. Uh, my time's up. Yes, sir, your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but thank you. <laughs> you're, 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 you're on a roll there, and I'm sorry to, to interrupt, That's but, but uh, I'm glad to be fair to everybody. And I think we had, uh, there was another person that wanted, uh, was not able to make it, and they sent us a uh, short um, statement. And Anise is going to read that statement for us. And it's from... It's from Charles Simulton. I currently work for Indiana County Children and Youth Services, and I am in the placement caseworker role there. I am also a father of three children in the district, Sydney, Brady, and Landon. I am not a politician. This is not a position I want to use for political gain. I want what is best for the children of the Indiana Area School District. I want to be able to make sure that our children continue to receive high quality education and in, are in position to succeed with the resources we can provide. I moved to Indiana in 2007, my sophomore year at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I have grown as a person, husband and father living in this community. We have a duty to this community to provide a service to every child that will enter our buildings and seek education and help them achieve their educational endeavors and future aspiration. We have a duty to this community to provide to continue to provide the best education there is for the children. I want to be a beacon for this community, a community that is very diverse. All children deserve equal opportunity to succeed no matter the economical status of the family or heritage. This is something I would look to continue working on as a board member. In closing, I want to be a champion for all families and students. I will be accessible to the members of the community and will listen and hear their issues with an open mind and heart. I want to be here to serve every student and family in the district. I see this as an opportunity to serve. It would be an honor to serve on this board. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your for his comments as well, Anise. Okay, um, so um, I want to make a, a couple of changes to the uh, motions. Uh, 2.1 um, under motion one, I would like it to read uh, to approve the board member replacement procedures that we sent everybody on the board and was available for the um, uh, public to pick up prior to the meeting. Um, uh, I'm sorry, but before we start that, the question um i sent to the board earlier um if you look on the back of that page we have three different options that we can do to make the final selection one of the issues and one of the difficulties we have is i'm sure everybody who has listened to the just even the comments that were given is that we have this very broad diverse group of individuals with a lot of high qualities um uh, and the question is how do we take these nine highly qualified individuals 
and and get down to to one person that we can appoint to the board. So when we get to the final selection, we have three options. Option one is just a direct nominee of the finalist by a board member. Option two is a polling of the board. And option three would be a ranking of the um, uh, all those uh, folks who made it to that final cut. My question to the board is, is does anybody have a preference or uh, can we get to a consensus as to which one of these three that we will use when we uh, actually make the final selection? Okay, my question is, um, is the first page, is that any of the ones I'm missing? Is it, is it a different set of options or is it? So, so the, the, when we get through the first page, right. then we will come down to the final selection. Which is these options. Which is th these options in the back. And the, the question is, how do you want to make that final final selection? I think you should, we should make a motion. And, and the motion should include one of the options. And we either vote on that option or somebody makes the motion to use one of the other options. I'm just, just like the <laughs> I'm, more than, I'm more than okay with that, Tom. Okay. Then I move that uh, we do step one through four and option and five option two. Okay. That seems to be a consensus. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. For option two. For option two. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or discussion on option two? Does anybody want to make a motion to accept one of the other options? Well, I mean, actually, well, you've got a motion on the table right now, Tom. You can't. Yeah, no, I can amend the motion on the table. Yeah. Okay. I did, okay, yes, so I does anybody does anybody want to amend Tom's motion to, to one of the other options? Okay, good. Is that Cinda, Sue? Terry? I'm good. Terry's joining us by uh, phone here. I'm good. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's on. He's on. He's yeah, he's only on. on, Terry. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, on. I'm going to hang up on you then. Yeah. Okay. You want to record that Terry's with us? Okay. okay, so um there are no motions to amend it. Are there any other questions, comments, or discussion on it? All those in favor of approving this option two, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay. Back to our agenda. Um I would like to approve of the uh, these procedures as uh, that motion number one rather than as the motion states may i have a motion to approve the procedures please so moved. okay second second okay questions comments or discussion on the procedures Are, is options part of the procedures? Um, yeah, the options are so part of it. It says each board member by roll call will be asked which candidate. So you can't Correct. say two, you can always say one. Correct. Mm -hmm. For the last round. For the That's last. only the last round. I'm talking about. Yes. Right, right. Yes. That's the last That's round. That's the last very, round. For the very last round. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, or discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, board member replacement. Replacement procedures, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, under item two, I do want to read uh, for the benefit of the public and to further acknowledge all of the people who, who did submit their names. Uh, but because the motion was changed to number one, we do not need um, the motion listed under number two. The following individuals submitted a cover letter and resume in consideration to fill the vacancy of IASD Board of Directors due to Ms. Lieber's resignation. Ron Earhart, Yah Asamoa, James Keener, Bernie Lockard, Patrick Snyder, Joseph Schwartz, Krista Svange, Charles Similton, and Doug Steve. Okay, so now we are into the procedures portion of this. Okay, our step one is to express, uh, we've already expressed our gratitude towards the 
folks that um, have applied, and I certainly would ask the other uh, eight members who aren't selected to um, run for school board or apply the next time there's a vacancy. Okay. Um, and we're also going to ask Mike to send a letter to each of you um, further expressing from the, the board's perspective our, our gratitude. All right, so now we're going to, to move candidates forward. Okay, each board member will be asked if they wish to move one or more names forward to the first round of, of voting. Go ahead, Tammy. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, Mr. Forgive me for butchering the name. I'm horrible. Uh, Mr. Azamala. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Krista Savajan. Okay. Um, I have four. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Mrs. Schneider and Mr. Kinnear. Okay. Jim. Uh, Krista Savajan and Ron Earhart and Bernie Locker. Okay. Julia. Um, Ron Earhart, um, Dr. Asamoa, and uh, Mr. Schneider. 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 Sorry, sir. Not speaking I'm for sorry, yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Cindy, your turn. Um, Ron Earhart and Mr. Schneider. Sue. Dr. Asamoa. And Mr. Steve. Okay. Uh, Tom. Ron Earhart, Dr. Asamoa, Mary Lockard, Joseph Schwartz. Okay, Terry. Yeah, Mr. Snyder, Mr. Earhart, Mr. Kinnear, and Mr. Lockard. Okay, and my selections are Mr. Kinnear, Mr. Lockard, Mr. Earhart, and Dr. Asamoa. Okay, so that gives us a list of how many total, Denise? Of people total? Airhart, Lockard, and Schwartz. everyone except for Charles Simiton. I believe you got a vote. Yes. Yes. So only Charles Simpson was eliminated. Let her double check, but if I understood the nominees, I find that to be correct, sir. Let her yes. double check. Okay. Yes. What what Okay, yeah, Charles is the only one, and Doug Long got one. Okay. And then. Okay, and then but, but those eight then will be, those eight then will be considered in the, um, in this first round of voting. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way the first round of voting, again, our goal here is to try to reduce this to three to four people going into the final, final consideration. Um, the voting in the first round will be conducted by simply raising of hands when a candidate's name is read. The question will be how many wish to move this name to the next round. Okay. What so in, are, what only one, Charles Simpleton. Okay. Denise, do you want to go ahead and start uh, reading the names from the top? as to um, 
and then um, I'll ask everybody that wants to move that name forward to raise their hand. Okay, so just start in alphabetic order. Start in alphabetic order. Okay, Ron Earhart. Um, Terry, Terry six. Nice. Terry has a question. Well, that's the way I'm going to do it. No. Okay. Is this going to be an official vote for we? No, no. This you just, just, just we're, again, we're trying to reduce the pool. Okay, and so just by a simple show of hands, we'll move each candidate forward. Okay. Um, next name. Dr. Ashamoa. Five. Terry? Is Terry? No. Nope. No. Okay. Okay. Mr. Kinnear? Terry? Okay. Mr. Lockard? Three, four. Is that Terry? Yeah, Terry. Did Mr. Hot Hammond hand up? Yes, he did. Okay, that's fine. Five. Mr. Schneider. Two. Terry. Three. Three. Joseph Schwartz. Three. And Terry. Um, Krista Sabajian. And Doug Steve. Okay. okay, so how many candidates do we now have that are uh, that received five, uh, five hands? We have Mr. Lockard, Dr. Ashamoa, and Mr. Earhart. So there's just the three. Yes, two got five and one got six. Okay, so at this point by our procedures, if three or four candidates make it through the first round of voting, but no more than we will go directly to the final selection of a single candidate to be appointed by the board. And we, say that uh, again. Okay, it's it's the very last item E under step three. If three or four candidates make it through the first round of voting, but no more, then we will go directly to the final selection of a single candidate to be appointed to the board. Okay, so we go to now we go back over to option two. Okay, <clears throat> each board member by roll call will be asked which candidate they want appointed. At this point, each board member is restricted to one candidate from the final list. <clears throat> if in this process, any one candidate receives the necessary five votes, then it is over and they are appointed this process would be repeated until a candidate receives five votes. Okay. Jared, if you would, please. Tammy Blank. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Asimov. Cinder Brown. Ron Earhart. Julia Tamarki Kukro. Earhart. Mr. Harley. Walker. Mr. Kerr. Mr. Earhart. Dr. Rigg. Dr. Asimel. Dr. Schaefer. Earhart. Mr. Shrove. Earhart. Five votes. Five votes. Five votes. Okay. That's it then. I thank you all again for coming. Thank you all for your submission of your of your application. And I don't see Ron in the audience, so we'll contact him uh, for um, um, application. Okay. Yes, Tom. I'd like to make a motion that we unanimously appoint Ron Earhart as as board member. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion is carried. Okay, I think we have some policy and personnel committee work to do, Cinda. I'm, I'm not ready for a regular meeting. <laughs> um, okay. What's that?
Hey, all right. Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and just um, um, have a have a couple minute break here before we uh, thank thank these folks and uh, go from there. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, nice to meet you. Thank you. Cinda, <laughs> pay attention. Okay. Um, looking at this very quickly, unless there's some reason that we can't do them all by consent, does anybody have a problem with doing them by consent? No. Okay. Um, 3.1 is employment of summer learning camp support staff, and that would be an administrative assistant and a teacher's aide for summer camp. Employment of summer camp staff, and this is uh, summer camp learning tutors. There are six of those and one substitute. And then summer school uh, motion for a summer school BCIT instructor. And the names will be provided. If there's anybody here from the press, we'll provide the names after. So I make a motion that we do three one, three two, and three three as consent. Second. Okay. Questions, comments, or discussion? I would Michael like Rob, do you want to add? Yeah, it's like a little context for this. So we had uh, no teachers apply for the junior high portion of the summer camp. So what we did was we moved um, teachers who were certified out of our current learning camp pool up and um, replaced them with uh, other qualified candidates. So the ones that had initially signed up to the uh, summer camp for elementary who also had secondary education certs, we moved them to the junior high to help those children. And now we're replacing them essentially, thus the extra six tutors. That's why I just want to explain where that came from because you hired so many of them last time. Yes, sir. What's the, what's the numbers? What are the and numbers for the, the camp? Uh, let me, um, we're, we're near 350, I believe. No kidding. Yeah. If I could put that in context, that's pretty remarkable after a year of kind of like you think people would go back to a little normal or vacations. It's a it's a great response rate, in our opinion. Is that the elementary number? Yes, sir. Elementary. That's, that's, that's elementary, and then there's 60 junior high students. Well, so, yes, yeah, so we'll so be we'll over 400 students when it's all so, so, so it starts when? Tuesday. Wednesday. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so there's still time to sign up. There is still time to sign up, but you have to call now. They turned the form. We turned the form off online because every time we would start to make a list, more people would come on, and we sent out a thing that said, "Hey, you know, last call," and then we shut off. So now it's by uh, you got to call the school, and they'll put you on a list and send you. A... But last year we had about twenty or so, twenty-five students who just showed up. Showed up. Mm -hmm. And okay. we all turn people away. If you want to learn, we're going to teach you. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so this just make it clear about the the junior high portion of it. This is for students who are working on credit recovery. They yes, ma'am. So it's not just a fun summer camp. This is making yeah. you get credits so Correct. you can graduate. The last so time, I can remember if it's the last of academic meeting or the time before that, I told you we were trying to approach uh, summer school a little bit differently, trying to be a, a 
proactive, positive approach to it where it's not going to be so draconian and uh, disciplinary and, hey, you've failed, so here's an eight-week online course with even less support, you know, and surprise, surprise, you failed again. Um, this is now they're going to come in, and these teachers, uh, these, these tutors, I guess I should say, have been tasked with really kind of finding out the why behind the, the where the student failed. And if it is a, a self-efficacy issue, we have summer camp staff that can help with that. They can counsel, they can run groups, they can talk about social emotional uh, competencies. If it's a reading or math deficiency, we have reading specialists on staff who will meet with that kid, really run a diagnostic and really start to approach solving that student's um, underlying issue behind it. And if it really is, hey, you know, I just didn't do well, I didn't study, and I need to redo again, well, these teachers are very competent and they're you know, qualified and capable of filling in the gaps there. Our junior high teachers provided um, some key components that they wanted to make sure that the summer staff covered with those teachers, and they gave them some starting points, and we have some data from which those, those teachers can proceed. So it should be a little bit more personalized, a little bit more positive, and it really, hopefully, the goal is that we dig down to the why behind these kids, you know, lack of success and get them over that hump and reconnect them to school, get them positive again about coming to school. So fingers crossed, but I think we got the right people in the right spots. Thank you. So um, currently we're going to fund this out of Esser's funding. Yes, sir. Okay. And we have one more year to use the Esser's funding to, to fund this, correct? That is correct, sir. Um, my request, uh, Rob, would be for you guys to track what happened last year, what happens this year, and what happens next year to help justify um, the additional expense is if it continues to be 350 plus kids at these uh, summer school programs, 410. well, 410, whatever, um, you know, this may be something that we're, I don't want to use the word forced, but, but, but we may not have any option other than to continue it regardless of where the funding comes from. Yes, but we also need to be able to justify the, you know, the, the statistically the good that it's actually, the good that it's actually doing, not just in the number of students that sign up, but the the results of, of their efforts in the summertime. Yes, sir. And we, you know, we have a plan in place for that already. Uh, we had data for last year. We're going to run the same play for the elementary. At the, the plan is for the secondary that there's going to do some sort of end of course uh, test again to see if there's improvement and see if there's uh, some mastery there. And we'll go from there. But uh, we'll have data for you. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, After three years of it, we will. That's an almost enough for a trend. Okay. Yes, Tom. What do you anticipate the total cost is for the program? We know the elementary uh, programs are around uh, $280,000 to $300,000. Tap into middle school. It's forty-eight thousand dollars was the budget you approved for the so summer school. You'll say close to four hundred thousand, Jared. Is that fair yeah. on your on your end? It's a four hundred thousand dollars annual. Four hundred thousand. Does that include the senior high as well? Or? No. no. Okay. Summer school for senior high is handled separately, separate. so, and I believe we spent about twenty-five thousand dollars on that last year. Is that remotely successful? Yes, we had a, a significant increase last year with our new approach to summer school for the senior high. We went from a 30% or 39% pass rate to somewhere around 60. So we had a significant increase in the number of students who were successful the second time. Um, and we, we credit some of that to the, the mentoring approach. And uh, the, uh, we hired mentors, if you remember, to knock on doors and, and uh, help kids. And uh, you know, Mr. Cochran does a nice job leading those teachers there. Um, with uh, making sure they have the reaching out to those kids and making relationships, right, connections, you know, with those kids. So I think that was the difference. But to Mr. Schroth's point, not enough data yet to identify a trend, but we're we're going in the right direction. So roughly, we're spending about a thousand dollars a student. So roughly, and this is the first year for the junior high doing it this way. Correct. And if you, remember, you have your data from years previous so we'll be able to see what kind of a jump we get yes ma'am absolutely okay. and then the only the only thing i'll caution you there we're not going to be comparing apples to apples because no. we're not going to throw on ingenuity and and do that we're really trying to dig down and get their skills so it's not like we 
I mean, I've let the secret out, but if, you know, typically, even if you fail summer school, you still get socially promoted because the research says there's no, there's no benefit to holding them back and, with, and retaining them. All the research also says when you socially promote them, their academics don't usually get better either, right. but at least their behaviors, you know, stay in check. So we're trying to really identify the why, <coughs> fix as many of those whys as possible, and then hopefully get enough skills and enough of those key components that the junior high teachers think are, are, are key in place so that they can move forward confidently and, and be as close to, you know, on level as possible. It's a, it is a, uh, it's a new thing. We never really, we've never done it this way before, but we'll see if it works and we'll go from there. When do you think they'll have a report on two, at least a two year report? A data report from this year, we could probably have that by, in the summer, yeah, August. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments, or discussion? The visa funds, visa funds are allocated for next summer. As for uh, funds. And, and yes. Current budget. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. yeah, don't say peas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think peas are still. Yeah, summer school is. We have funded for one more year. Summer yeah. school is part of the budget. All branches of summer school. All the branches. junior high too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I'm excited about the junior high. I, yeah, we we need to do that. And and Jared, I think it's important to let the board know um, we came under budget last year, so um, we're in a good spot this year to be able to afford it, and next year as well, like we said. But so yeah, we're excited too. <clears throat> okay. All those in favor of three one through three three, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motions carry. We have any, I'm sorry, 341 students currently registered, um, plus the call ones, so right around 330. Okay, do we have any public comment on agenda items? Nothing seen or heard. Our next regular board meeting will be next uh, Monday at uh, 7 o'clock for general purposes. Our next committee meeting will be next Monday at 5 30 person policy and personnel may have a motion to adjourn second okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. we are adjourned thank you everyone thank you.